Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this uh, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're dialing in from. Um, we're so excited to be here with you today. Um, it's about 1059 uh, in the central right, time zone, 859 in, in Pacific. We're going to get started here in a couple minutes. I just want to wait, uh, you know, about two minutes to get get everybody a chance to, to join us and um, and, and hear what we've got to say today. We're really excited to um, uh, kind of share some of the findings that that we've um, gathered uh, from the recent survey that we did. And we're really excited to have Igor Mezik here, um, chief scientist of mixed mode, but also distinguished professor at UCSB and AI expert and cybersecurity expert. Um, really, really happy to have Igor here to talk about some of these things. So we're just going to give it maybe another minute uh, a minute and a half. I just want to let everybody join. It looks like we've got a great crowd here, here already. Um, so I'll give it about about another minute. And, and you know what? While, while we're doing that, um, I think the best uh, thing to do is kind of do some light housekeeping here. Um, if you look at your screen, uh, I think you'll be able to see there's a, a few different options on the right-hand side. Uh, there should be a chat button. So if you're having any issues with the webinar, um, you know you want to you want to interact with the, with the crowd. Uh, go ahead and use that chat button. Um, but the webinar today will be about 45 minutes. Uh, we'll be doing about 25 to 30 minutes uh, of. Um, we'll be presenting for about 25 to 30 minutes, and then we'll take the last, uh, you know. 15, 20 minutes um, for a Q&A session. And you'll be able to ask any questions that you have using the, um, the questions tab. Uh, I think it's on your right-hand side. It's on my right-hand side. So I assume it's on your right-hand side as well. Um, there'll be a Q&A at the end uh, where you'll be able to ask Igor questions. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly related to the webinar. We'd like to keep it a little bit on topic, but if you have questions, you know, please ask them at the end. Um, and uh, I think I've talked long enough for, to, to wait for people to get on. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and, and kick, this, kick this off. So again, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, it's always nice uh, to do one of these live, um, but uh, last bit of housekeeping, this will be available on demand after the webinar is over. And everybody that signed up, even if you didn't join live, will receive um, a video copy of this webinar. And you'll also receive the slides, um, which include our full state of InfoSec Q3 2022 report. Um, and so that, that leads me nicely into the topic of the webinar today, uh, which is um, an analysis of our recent report, again, the state of InfoSec Q3 2022. Um, and um, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll introduce the the study a little bit, and then I'll, I'm going to introduce Igor, our speaker, uh, right after I do that. Um, so we, uh, we ran a, a study of about 100, and it was exactly 177 uh, cybersecurity professionals uh, about a month ago um, to find out, you know, what they're currently seeing in the threat landscape, um, hiring decisions they're making, how they're managing their SOC, what priorities they have, um, moving forward. And we got a great, great um, swath of folks from across different industries, um, lots of executives, as well as, um, you know, boots on the ground practitioners, senior level cyber folks, um, just kind of ran the gamut. So we were able to get a lot of um, opinions here. But we asked questions about um, threat detection. Like I said, you know, what are some of the, the top threats folks are seeing um, and how, how they're responding to them? Um, efficiency in the SOC, how long it's taking uh, to detect and remediate and respond to threats. Um, and then we also asked uh, quite a few questions about um, the kind of personnel in the SOC and how, how large enterprises and enterprises are you know, what hiring decisions they're making, um, what's really important to them. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but first, I want to introduce our, our guest speaker here today, um, Igor Mezik. Um, Igor is a uh, professor of um, engineering and mathematics at UCSB, has a long history uh, as an expert in AI, 
um, and cybersecurity. Um, so I'll let Igor, Igor introduce himself. I, I can never do a good enough job. So how's it going, Igor? Hi, Christian. Thanks. Uh, thanks uh, for having me here too. But um, you usually do a great job introducing introducing me and say way more than I uh, than I deserve. Uh, I'm just going to say a, a few things. Um, uh, so my my history is uh, academically started about you know 1990, and since then I've been involved with creating algorithms in uh, dynamical systems, uh, machine learning, AI uh, uh, space. Uh, at the same time, uh, I had a, a few entrepreneurial uh, activities uh, going on as well, and um, uh, met. Uh, with John Keister, who is the CEO of, of Mixmode, in about uh, 2015, I think, and then uh, and then a few years later, as as we were talking, we we figured out that some of these algorithms that uh, that we were creating um, could be effectively applied to the domain of cybersecurity, and and here we are in in 2022, you know, a few years after we started Mixmode. Um, um, uh, Analyzing, understanding, uh, understanding the market, uh, discussing uh, the issues that are bothering the market right now, and trying to provide the effective solutions to resolve those. So, yeah, and um, we're really excited about what we're doing, um, and and just some of the research that we're able to provide here, um, and some of the insights we've been able to glean from users of our product, but also. Just, just the wider cybersecurity community, and and that's what we're going to be going over today. Um, you know, we we will, you know, may, maybe talk a little bit about mixed mode at the end, um, and in the Q and A session potentially. But this is going to be mainly focused around um, our Q three cybersecurity uh, state of infosec report because um, we found some pretty interesting stuff. And I'm going to kick it off. The way this is going to work is I'm just going to kind of introduce um, some of the findings uh, through the slides. And then I'm going to hand it over to Igor to talk about why some of this stuff is interesting and, and, and things that you can learn from, from the statistics that we found. Um, and so just to, just to kick off, uh, you know, we did, uh, like, like I said, we, we researched uh, or um, we surveyed about 177 cybersecurity professionals. Uh, off, I think we did about 45 questions. Um, and, and here are like kind of the top level things that we found. Um, in 2022, in Q3 2022, it's more expensive than ever to detect and remediate threats. Um, you know, number of threats is going up. Time to detection and remediation is also growing up. Something's eventually going to have to give here. Um, and then, you know, the hiring demands are shifting as well. Um, you know, senior cybersecurity professionals are, are, are in demand, but um, machine learning and AI experts are also very much in demand for cybersecurity teams, um, which is very interesting. Um, cyber attacks are becoming more frequent. We all know this. We see them in the news. We see, you know, log4j, zero day attacks had happened frequently. I think there was one recently on Mac. I mean, there's just, there's a new one almost every day now. You can't, you aren't imagining it like it says there. Um, and the scary part about that is that the threats are becoming harder to detect and address. Um, and so some of the key focus areas for, for our, our CISOs and, and, and the, the cyber executives that we um, surveyed uh, were, were insider threats, zero trust, and cloud security. And so we'll go over some of those things in the slides. But just off the jump, Igor, what stands out to you here? Um, you know, we'll go deeper into each one of these topics, but is there anything, you know, you want to you add here on the executive summary? What, kind of what, what top level findings we found? Yeah, so first of all, Christian, really nice analysis, really nice work. Um, uh, congrats on that. I, I do think that the items on executive summary actually, uh, in, in some sense, go together. They tie together. Uh, if one if one looks at them, you know, with more frequency of attacks, with more, um, I would say, skill to those attacks. Um, it should become more expensive to detect and remediate um, and harder to detect them. So I, I, I think the, the, these, these are very highly correlated. Now, what is interesting, what was interesting to me when I was reading through this and trying to understand it is, uh, is you know, that the senior cybersecurity talent 
we, we all know that 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 the field is understaffed. That's not that's not uh, a secret. Now, what is interesting is at which level, right? And it seems that as a field, we are losing people that uh, that have that experience and talent. The the ones that that are actually senior. Uh, that that's where we are missing missing the most people. And so the, let's you know as as we go, we'll discuss that a little bit more as to exactly how this is correlated and and and, and what is going on. Yeah, yeah, we'll dig into every every kind of piece of what you were just talking about. I know we have some really interesting statistics to back that up, and then we can talk about why some of those things are happening and what we can do about them. Um, so, you know, we'll just jump right in and, and we'll talk uh, a little bit about the threat landscape um, and how SOX and security teams are, are handling um, some of these threats. And so just off the jump, um, some of the things that really stood out uh, from the research that we did uh, is that almost, I mean, definitely over two thirds, but 70% of respondents here agree that the number of threats and the mean time to detection or remediation have either remained the same or gone up over the last year. So we're not necessarily, but I guess, you know, the tools that we have in place, um, you know, Threat, threat actors are becoming better at their job, I guess. Um, and and uh, it's becoming harder and take, taking longer to detect these threats. Um, and again, you know, uh, half of, over half of respondents are saying that the uh, average time to remediation has, has increased, like I said. Um, but I think the last stat here is, is pretty, pretty eye-opening. Um, Two thirds of cybersecurity respondents and professionals said that it take, takes them longer than five months to detect and remediate a threat on average. That one really stood out to me. So I'm going to throw it over to Igor to talk a little bit about how these these numbers are rising and and maybe why. Yeah. Um, yeah first of all, the, the the fact that it takes longer than 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 five months is. Is really a terrible statistic, and and it's not due to, it, it it's it, it you know it's it's due to in my in my view at least, uh, it, it's showing the fact that we don't have the tools that are skilled enough to give us the warning on um, the attacks either imminent actually ideally it would be predictive um, or ongoing attacks so real time uh, that that seems to be really lacking and and the reasons for that we can you know we can we can discuss at length um, but the, the the fact that the threats are increasing is partially due to the geopolitical situation as well things have changed cyber has been weaponized we all knew if, if you read books from 2001 2003 2005 everybody knew that this was coming I mean the, the major authors that were writing these uh, these um, uh, manuals in, in network security they they understood this was coming but it wasn't as prominent as it started being you know in the last decade in the last five years especially and once you have cyber weaponized and 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 and, and nation states willing to take, an offensive posture, not defensive. Um, then you have um, resources that that hackers in the wild, let's call them, uh, didn't have before. Those small groups of loosely, you know, loosely coupled organizations didn't have the the kinds of tools that are being used in 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 cyber today in in attacks. And so the, the threat landscape has changed. In my view, that we can label it as pessimistic. This side of the equation is not going to change. I think we're going to see an exponential increase in in the in the uh, threat volume and type. Um, and I would say, especially type, we are going to see more skilled attacks, not simple denial of service or, or things of that sort that that you know to, to a certain extent we understand how to deal with and we have we have tools with but but very very sophisticated machine learning driven ai driven type types of attacks so um again 
not surprising the the underlying currents are are such that uh, unfortunately this situation is going to continue I yeah and I, that's it's scary but you know it, i want to touch on a couple things that you, you said one of which was that um kind of where the the geopolitical situation is having an effect on these numbers right and and um we're seeing more attacks not only just from the um the research that we did here but uh, just from anecdotal stories and then boots on the ground evidence from customers that, um, you know, adversarial foreign nation states are taking aim at enterprises. And we've seen articles, every, everybody has seen this, right? And that's scary because, you know, a, a normal hacker, let's say a normal hacker, um, you know, maybe one, a domestic hacker or, or somebody that's just working for themselves is probably looking for a payday, probably looking you know, doing a ransomware attack, trying to get um, some money, some Bitcoin. But when um, a foreign adversary, when the when the war, when when wars are starting to be fought on on the cyber battlefield, right? We're going to start seeing attacks that uh, shut down power plants and you know do things unspeakable things to water treatment centers, things like that 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 are starting to get really scary. And it's like you said, I think the it's not necessarily the the um, the, prof the people, right? Because it seems like our cyber community is getting bigger. Um, you know, there's more resources than ever, but they can't do anything without effective tools. And it's seeming like <laughs> they're just not working. It's not a, it's not it's not the people. It's the it's the tools uh, that are missing. I mean, just the last thing that you pointed out, which is, um, let's say that that we have an attack that's targeting infrastructure, uh, maybe power plants or, or uh, water treatment facilities. As we've seen those. I mean, it's not, it's not hypothetical. Um, they, they didn't succeed at a large scale, fortunately, but, um, but we've seen attempts. Uh, those are cyber physical, right? So they go through the cyber side um, and then infiltrate the network and then try to do something physical to the system. And that's, the increase in in this type of an attack is, um, I, I would say, one of the scariest features of the, of the current state of state of affairs. Because as long as things are contained to our computing devices, um, a, there is uh, of course damage involved, and and maybe maybe large scale damage, but it's it's commonly not human life um and and now we're getting into the domain where uh, human human life is in question at, a, at the same time <clears throat> the lack of tools again is even more prominent because we 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 don't have very effective tools that are protecting the cyber physical domain so the domain where uh, where computing uh, computing infrastructure is controlling the the, the physical infrastructure. So uh, the, the 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 pointers, the directions in, in that context are 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 not good. And I think as a community, we need to start building uh, more powerful tools to protect us on that on that side and and rapidly. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How can you not agree? It's scary. <laughs> that's just, that's just scary. But, um, I think, you know, I, I do think the, uh, acceleration of, of, uh, innovation, I guess, and, in, in, in the cyber tools that we're using, we're starting to see some, some different approaches that are showing promise. Um, you know, X mode being one of those, but we can talk more about that kind of at the end. Um, and, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit about what, uh, how SOC teams or security teams, right, are responding to threats, how long it's taking. Um, but we wanted, uh, one of the things, one of, one of the things I wanted to talk about next um, was this, um, you know. Uh, Chris, yeah. Uh, there was a brief question. Do you, do you want to keep those for the end or? Oh, yeah. I mean, since this one, the since the question is rel relevant to what you were talking about, um, we can we can go ahead and answer uh, that. Questions, do you mean IoT and OT? And I mean both. Uh, that's that's a short that's a short answer there. Yeah. 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 I mean both, right? And and both are equally can be equally scary. And you know, things are applied there. Um, <clears throat> 
thanks Mohamed for the question and, and anybody else that has a question again, if, if you have like a live question, happy to answer it. Um, we'll, we'll take stops. Um, and then if you have a question that we want to use at the very end or that you would like us to answer at the very end, please also ask it in there. Um, yeah, back to, back to the, back to the slides and the research here. Uh, one of the big focus areas for us was let's talk about what SOX are doing. Let's talk about what CISOs are doing with their team, who's being hired, what security professionals and what, what matters to folks. And it's, uh, it, it's pretty, I mean, you know, r relatively eye opening. um, the, that uh, number one, senior level folks are being uh, prioritized um, as as a, as hiring rather than junior level folks that can, you know, there's a lot more of them obviously because there's new people coming into the field, um, and senior level folks are more expensive, um, but they are better. They're you know probably more experienced, obviously. Um, but secondly, that the um, kind of second most uh, the second biggest priority for cybersecurity team hiring is AI and machine learning folks. And yeah. so Igor, why don't you talk a little bit about why the senior level folks and some of the things you think about that. But I also want to hear about why are so many AI and machine learning people needing to be hired? Yeah. And that, um, uh, Christian, that, that ties up really well to what we just spoke about, interestingly. <laughs> Um, and we, because we, we spoke about the uh, lack of tools and, and understanding in the, in the domain, in the cybersecurity domain, that we are getting attacked by more sophisticated, by more sophisticated means uh, that include machine learning and AI on, let's say, nation state level. And that the protection from that can only go through uh, defenders using the, the machine learning and, and AI. But let me, let me talk about that. A little bit more in in a in a moment, um, because other items here are also related to the same conclusion from the previous slide. Interestingly, um, as, let's ask the question: Why is it that that the senior level cybersecurity uh, um, experts uh, are are being, you know, number one? stated as number one hiring priority. Um, to my mind, uh, uh, to a large degree, that's that's likely due to the fact that the junior level people don't have uh, sophisticated enough tools to get them to the conclusions about what's going on fast enough. We saw that there is a, a, a five months uh, delay in, in recognition that there was, uh, there was an, an attack uh, or an incident going on. Uh, and only people with a higher level of experience can actually contribute to defending the system effectively. It again speaks to you know the state of affairs. Uh, it, it, it's it's due to the fact that we need to train people to a very high level in order for them to become effective and resolve things resolve things quickly. Um, it, it's not a simple domain. It's it's a very 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 complex domain. Anybody who's ever touched it understands that that. Um, uh, being a, a, a cybersecurity analyst is not an easy job. The amount of information is is massive. The other day, I I, I compared it with, uh, you know, um, um, some elements of of how, for example, the the human brain processes things. You have photons coming to your eyes, but you don't react to every individual photon, but you you receive them all. It's a massive amount of information, and then the, the brain is this powerful machine that processes all of this and 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 makes conclusions and root cause analysis. It's incredible at that. Now think about all the bits <laughs> and bytes that are that are coming through a, a typical network as these photons, and now you need to make sense of all the traffic that's coming that's coming through. And understand the parts of that traffic that are malicious. It's complicated. <laughs> it's it's horrendously complicated. And so, and and by the way, 
the the analysis that that we get is not adapted to our physical environment it's it's really bits it's not photons right our eyes and brain are very very adapted to deal with with visual um so the learning process on such a complex system for a junior analyst is is not easy they get trained at great places and uh, once again when they get into an organization where uh, you know serious defending needs to be done um it's a new environment everything about that environment needs to be learned and uh and uh, the the tools that they get presented with are often i, I should say you know somewhat somewhat confusing a lot of false positives um who knows about false negatives i mean that's basically what the analysts are uh, you know uh, supposed to also find out are there any false negatives? And then five months later, they figure out, yeah, there are false negatives. We didn't catch this. We didn't catch this at the beginning. So, I mean, this uh, is a long, uh, a long discussion of, of the fact that the people who can effectively react to modern attacks that are that are complex and, and sophisticated are the people that have actually, you know, very good level of experience, and so we're lacking senior senior uh, cyber security staff. So when you analyze it like that, not not extremely not extremely not extremely surprising. It goes back to again, I, I would not say training. I've I've scanned the the you know analyst training recently again, and you know, every school from MIT to Caltech to everybody is offering these courses, and you can bet that these courses are actually very very effective and very good. That's not where the, where the problem is. We, 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 we are getting the training at the level at which we need to get trained. So we, are, we still don't have a, you know, sufficiently sophisticated tools to deal with this. And, and therefore, uh, we, we lack uh, uh, senior analysts because we need more of them than the junior ones because it's, it's just difficult to get from that you know, out of school to the, senior, to the senior level. We're not getting people through the pipeline. Um, uh, fast enough. So that states the case for you know more machine learning, more more um, AI type approach that that bridges that gap for for the time being and speeds up the junior analysts' um, experience in the field uh, uh, to to the level where they can become uh, sophisticated users and 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 analysts uh, yeah. in a shorter amount of time. Yeah, I can, you know, cyber, I've spoken to so many cyber, you know, analysts and, and executives and managers, and it can be a thankless job sometimes. I mean, think about it. It's like you only get noted, like not noticed, but like something only bubbles up if something really bad is happening. If you do, if you, you know, stop an attack, like, nobody knows because nothing happened. Right. <laughs> because, because everything is just as, as usual. So, I mean, I have like ultimate levels of respect for those, those folks that can, that can do that. It's, 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 it's a tough job. And and the tools right now, most of them are not making it any easier. And sometimes, like you said, they're actually making it more difficult, right? Like if you're, if you adopt something, an NDR, or a SIM um, that, is delivering you in some cases, and research backs this up, 70%, 80% uh, false positives. Well, I don't know how you can effectively do your job, right? You're spending majority of your time looking at things that just aren't there um, or, or are, are inconsequential. So, um, oh, go ahead. And, and to tie up to that, Humans and experts in cybersecurity are extremely good at that, right? They even look at these um, tools that provide them with a lot of false positives. And, and if they have enough experience, they're going to rank them and they're going to understand which ones to address first. But that's exactly tied to the response to, your, to, 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 the, to, the, to the survey. Uh, that's why exactly you need that experience. So, so in a certain period of time, the... the, the, the uh, Analysts do develop that experience to kind of sift through even an inadequate tool. Uh, it would be way better if they had an adequate tool that can actually bring up the prioritization and 
and have a very low rate of false positives and pretty much no false negatives. Um, it, that's the ideal state of affairs because then you know you you don't need all that experience and all that brilliance of the human brain to to reach the conclusion uh you you get there a little bit faster and you'll always need people at that level hopefully you just won't need as many of them that there is a huge gap in your in in your uh in your uh, cybersecurity posture exactly well i you know i want we're at 30 minutes so i want to i want to go through the last the last bit of research here and then get to a q a we've had a few questions come through we'll answer them at the end thank you tala and muhammad um for for your questions and again anybody else that has one please ask it uh, over in the right hand column um the last uh slide we had here um was it's summarizing some research we did around what are people what are top priorities for cybersecurity teams and and i guess some of some of the things were like or some of the big sort of like threats that you're, you're, you're facing. And unsurprisingly, uh, you know, I've spoken, I speak to quite a few different like analysts, uh, you know, in my job as, as a marketing director. Um, and they're seeing the same thing from their customers. I actually talked to a, an analyst, a head analyst over at Gartner yesterday. Um, and I asked him, you know, what are some of the biggest concerns for 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 cyber teams that, are, that you're seeing, and from CISOs, and these three were the exact three that he labeled. And so we found the exact same thing when we did our research. We found that by a pretty big majority, the top three priorities for security teams, at least in Q3 when we did this research, um, were insider threat, cloud and then zero trust, right? Insider threats, big priority, cloud security, big priority. Zero trust also um, has has really emerged as a massive um, priority for folks. And so why do you think this is, Igor? Um, and um, and what can be done about it? And, and before I actually let you go, there was one, not let you go, let you speak. Uh, There's one other thing I wanted to point out here more than two thirds, so seventy percent of folks actually said that the number of threats they're seeing uh, have increased or um, stayed constant over the path compared to previous years. So those numbers are not going down; they're going up. And these are the priorities for CISOs um, and cyber folks. Why is that? And um, I guess, yeah, I guess yeah. why is that? Yeah. So it's. It's interesting to map these top three priorities that come up, they, they came up in this survey, as you point out, Christian, they come up in, in conversations, they they come up in, in research, you know, over and over again in research papers. And, and, and so, so they pop up everywhere. It's interesting to map them to um, kind of the, 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 the either the social or the technical context. And so insider threats have been known for a long time to be the, the dominant contributor to successful attacks. Um, zero trust, that's related to the fact that hackers use social engineering in, in attacks, right? So somebody can acquire a password from a person inside an organization and then, and then, and then uh, do damage. And cloud security, that's related to the fact that we have an expanding infrastructure, the cloud infrastructure that uh, that uh, more and more large scale organizations are, are moving to. So if you look at all three of those, um, each of them has a kind of very good reason for existence from either the type of attack or the new infrastructure that somebody is, is either conducting or preparing preparing attacks uh, for. Now, um, the, the zero trust methodologies like, uh, you know, dual factor authentication, they've contributed a lot to um, the security posture. I, 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 don't, dis I don't dispute that uh, for a second, uh, but, but at the same time, zero trust really means as, as a definition and one should be observing behaviorally what is going on and not just based on credentials. Now, 
if you take a look at the landscape of tools out there that are capable of doing something like that, it's pretty it's pretty sparse. I mean, we certainly provide uh, some of those tools, so this is uh, self self referencing to to an extent. But it's really true that while the the authentication methods for zero trust kept becoming commoditized, uh, at the same time the behavioral methods are just not out there. Uh, there is not enough of them out there. Again, Mixmod provides uh, some of this. Um, the, the cloud security is a, is a new domain, and while you know network security is an, is, is, an, is an established domain, I mean, there are many books that have, that have been written about it. If you actually look for the literature on, on cloud security, there are a number of research papers showing showing up, and, and um, an understanding is being formed of what this should effectively effectively look like and again the number of tools that are providing help in that domain is 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 relatively small now insider insider threats uh, somebody who has access and just has malicious purpose again the the most likely uh, successful uh, way of capturing uh, those threats, is again behavioral, uh, trying to find out, you know, anomalies in, let's say, lateral traffic on our network. Somebody accessing the types of domains that they didn't access before, and it's not even the issue of the privilege, in a sense, because there are tools. We all know that 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 tools that provide privilege. I mean, th there are mistakes that get made setting them up. And yes, those are isolated incidents that, that sometimes happen. But but more generally, somebody from the inside can actually have all the privilege and, some, and sometimes develops, um, you know, a malicious intent. And and the way that can be detected is is behavioral, understanding the lateral movement of data on, on, on the network. Again, the, the, that points to uh, lack of tools that are actually directed to that uh, to that type of uh, of a threat, I think. So um, to summarize, all three of these are, are connected to either the type of hacking or the type of infrastructure that's increasing, uh, or or the type of of threat that is uh, that is uh, let's say has the easiest access, which is insider threat. Uh, but they, but all three of them, so they are connected to different aspects of the of the of the threat. But all three of them, the the reason why they are so uh, uh, such large threats is is really that we don't have effective enough tools, or we're you know starting to get some tools that can that can provide information about those. But the ones that that are out there are not effective enough yet. That seems to be a common theme. We can talk a little more about it um, in our Q&A uh, because we, well, we've got about seven minutes left and I want to respect everyone's time, but we do have a few questions. We also received a few questions before the webinar, so I'm going to go over those. Um, and this is your chance to ask Igor. We have, we have a couple questions uh, from the audience um, and I'll, I'll kind of just mix, mix them in with the ones that we got um, prior to the session. Um, and, and just first was a research methodology question. Uh, I, I, I think Tala, um, sorry if I'm, I'm mispronoun mispronouncing that, but they said, I'm curious to know what criteria were used in the study to differentiate between junior versus cybersecurity, junior versus senior cybersecurity professionals, so the threshold of terms of the number of years of experience. Um, we did it by job title. Um, and so I, I think that was the that was kind of the cutoff. We did, we literally have junior analysts, senior analysts, you know, and then executive level functions as well. So that hopefully that answers that. Um, and then one of the questions here, Igor, was from Mohammed. Um, it was about using AI hacking tools. He said, "What about using AI hacking tools such as AI breach and attack simulation or AI cyber ranges?" I'm not sure exactly what it was in reference to, but maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I mean, hopefully I didn't get the impression that there are no tools, uh, no, no tools out there. And I, I think 
Muhammad, you're you're thinking here of uh, the the ethical tools that that are providing us with tools to protect from AI uh, AI attacks. Um, so one of the issues with um, you know such testing is that they're largely built on the same kind of an idea as the signature software in in that signature based software in network security so something happens a signature for that is built uh, you know the, the, there is a rule that detects it and okay now we are safe from that particular incident um, that uh, has ish, obvious issues with it because if the hacker next time goes uh, via a different route, the, the particular signature is not going to detect that uh, that type of an attack. Now, this has now been ported to the AI space in, in, the, in the following sense. Let's suppose that the, the, the attacker is using a particular architecture and a particular AI type uh, uh, attack. Well, let's make sure that our system is, is protected from that. Let's remember that AI stands, you know, for <laughs> artificial intelligence, and that these systems can also, some of them, can also intelligently, uh, you know, avoid such signature-based uh, uh, simulation-type uh, detections. So, while I think these are useful, anything in this that is being developed in this direction is is useful. Um, I, I also think that they're not a complete answer, but I do hope that it's going to be more and more such tools that are coming coming to the market. Uh, and I do believe that just like you're seeing in the physical you know, warfare domain, um, a larger um, use of AI on AI, um, uh, this is going to develop in 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 cyber security domain as well because it is similar uh, and is it is expanding to the physical domain domain itself. So hopefully that that covers that question. Yeah, and then I'm going to take one quick one from from pro the that we received earlier. Um, you know, it, it actually it's it's about mixed mode, but it's also just you know kind of echoing some of the things that we found from the survey. Uh, my analysts are struggling. Um, you know, my analysts are struggling. We have a lot of uh, false alerts coming through. I guess false alerts, false positives uh, coming through. Um, I have a SIM. I have an NTA. Uh, why are they not working? And I've been looking at mixed mode. As, I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing this a little bit, but it was a long question. And, and how can mixed mode solve some of these problems that... Uh, my other tools that I've, I've adopted um, won't. Um, a great question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, the 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 tools that are being used in in the in cybersecurity today, I would say, are largely largely uh, rules based systems that. A serious development which started in 1980s, so 80s of the of, of the last century. Um, they are based on logic type rules, and if you have an exponentially increasing threat landscape, that I think we argued effectively that, and based on the based on the uh, survey that that's what's happening. Um, you would need to write an exponentially larger set of rules to um, to um, capture that. Now, all of those rules will actually have to be effective and and the thresholding with them and maintenance would have to be done. Um, you can immediately see that while in principle possible, in practice, uh, this would require just absolutely massive um, uh, cybersecurity teams. And so, I would peg the, you know, the the inadequacy of these tools uh, that, that you have pointed out to the way they are actually structured. They are not structured for effective 
root cause analysis. They're not structured for fast detection. They're, they're really structured for collection of data and compliance. Um, so, so they're not, I mean, it's, it's, the tools are not to blame in a sense because they were not structured originally to, um, to, 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 to get to the problems that, that we are discussing here. Uh, the way mixed motive and help is, well, we, we do have a tool that is actually structured to address these problems directly. Uh, it's not rule-based. You don't need to write a new rule every time you see a new type of attack out there, out there in the wild. Uh, you can get to the, to the root cause, you know, relatively, relatively fast. Um, I believe from you know experience from our customers, they, they they don't need to wait for a long time to see that something's going on. They get real time understanding of the behavior of their network. And by the way, as as a consequence, they they do get to understand the network a little a little better because they see how it responds, how it how it works, where the weak points are. Even on the OT side, that I think Mohammed mentioned at some point, uh, you know, the the tool is giving them information indirectly information about you know misconfigurations and and, and other aspects of, of the network that they should they should pay attention to so uh definitely let us know if you're if, you, if you're more interested uh, this is a relatively short answer as to the benefits of of the tool that we've been de developing but the independent survey really pointed out in the direction of what we've been developing what we thought we understood about about this the state of of the field yeah and we, we i mean we asked a lot of great questions i think we asked a lot of we weren't leading with our questions you know it was really just well done survey in my opinion in terms of the written, how it was written and we got some really good information from it and um you know i do want to respect everyone's time said this would be 45 minutes we have a couple questions left um and what i can do uh kevin and william is we can reach out directly and answer those questions um because I, I don't want to i don't want to keep anybody here too long um, but, um, I do want to thank Igor, um, tremendously, uh, for, uh, for joining us today and to hop in on the webinar, it was, give some of his expertise and analysis on this. I really appreciate your time, Igor. Well, thanks for having me. And this was fun and it was actually quite interesting to go through the slides and, and, uh, and the survey and, and see you know, the overlap between the kinds of ideas that we thought we knew uh, the direction of and, and, and the status of the field and then getting some of that, if not all, confirmed by um, by by the, by the analysis. So thanks for having me. Yeah, it is, it is funny. Um, we, yeah, it, we didn't, like I said, didn't ask any leading questions, but we really got a lot of confirmation. We will be, we're going to be trying to run this survey ideally every quarter, um, if we can, maybe once at once every H half, <laughs> um, if it comes to that, um, and see what insights we can glean as our audience gets bigger and we get some more information. Um, but again, want to thank everybody for joining. Um, if you put your email in, which I think you had to to join the webinar, uh, we'll be sending out a deck this deck that we went over so you can look over the slides and, and some of the information yourself. Uh, we'll also be sending over the recording of the webinar um, in an email as well. So that should come um, uh, relatively soon in the next 24 hours, you should receive that. Um, but again, thank you so much everybody for, for joining again, Igor, thank you and have a great rest of your day and, and please reach out to us at Mixed Mode um, info dot at info at mixmode.ai. If you have any questions, you want to talk, you can also just kind of use our contact form on the website or our demo request form on the website. If you want to learn more about mixed mode, we'd love to talk to you. Um, appreciate your time and, uh, hope everyone has a, a great Tuesday. Have a great Tuesday. All right. See everyone later. Yeah. Christian. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. Should I take us off stage or do you want me to? Well, if people are still here on, on William's question. I, I'm i currently watching devs. I don't know if anybody is watching that that series, but it's it's about quantum computing. Oh, I watched that. That was so good. It's good. But yeah, and go ahead and answer. I mean, I don't, I don't oh, want it. But um, one answer to provide there is as quantum computing develops, and it's going to take us some time. Uh, I know the progress is there, but it's going to take us some time. 
the simply the AI algorithms that we have on the classical computing side are going to be ported to AI algorithms that are going to be done with the quantum computers. So the war, the, <laughs> the war is going to continue. I, I don't, I don't suspect that uh, that uh, we're and, and, and unfortunately the the dark side is not going to develop. It's it's it's, it's hard to uh, hard to see that the dark side is not going to develop the the tools to attack the the, the let's call it the bright side. <laughs> no. uh, and 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 we are going to have to continue developing algorithms for AI that that are defensive that um, that are now being um, now being uh, driven by algorithms that are implemented on quantum computing computing devices. So I I don't. I don't actually think that the, that that changes the situation uh, very much, except for decryption. Obviously, that uh, that, that is going to uh, um, be changed. But really, that's 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 not the part that we talked about much uh, much here. So the encryption decryption aspect. So quantum computing is obviously going to change that. But yeah, yeah, the decryption side, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, again. Thank you. And again, have a great Tuesday and we'll, um, I'll be sending out all this information, the deck and the recording to you all. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.